Hello everyone. How are you today? I hope everyone is happy and healthy. Today, we're going to discuss motion and forces. However, before we start, let's pray first. Let's pray together. Amen. Do you love to play in the playground? Nice. Think about anything that can move when you're playing in the playground. The swing goes back and forth. The seesaw goes up and down. Meanwhile, the merry-go-round goes round in a circle. You see, there are so many ways in which things move. Everything we just described is types of motions. So, what is motion? Good. Motion is a movement from one place to another. When the seesaw is still, then you and your friend sit on it. It begins to have a motion. So, how do we describe the motion of an object? To describe the motion of an object, we use the position, speed, and the direction of the object. When the seesaw goes up and down, it changes its position. When things change their position, they are moving. The position of an object is the location of the object at a particular time. Everybody runs when they play tag with friends. There are different speeds in running. Speed of a motion refers to how fast or slow the object is moving. It is also the distance traveled by the object at a given time. Speed can also tell us how much time is needed to cover a given distance. If we watch a car race, we can say that each car has different speed. The fastest car has the highest speed compared to the other cars. Therefore, in the same distance, the fastest car needs the shortest time to travel the circuit. The direction of an object tells us where an object is heading. By stating the direction of movement of an object, we can describe its motion. Look at the picture. The boy on the swing changes his position as his direction of movement changes. As the boy moves forward, his position changes from A to B, then to C. Then, as the boy moves backwards, his position changes from C to B and back to A. How do we measure and represent the motion of an object? To measure the quantity like motion, we need to use appropriate measuring instruments. A unit is a standard measure to represent the amount of something. The symbol of the corresponding unit is usually placed after the number. For example, Lengths are measured using a unit called meter with the symbol M. The length of the table is 2 meters. Therefore, we can represent it as 2 meter. Measuring distance. To tell exactly how much an object has moved, we need to measure the distance traveled by the object. 
Short distance can be measured in centimeters with the symbol of cm using a ruler. Meanwhile, longer distances can be measured in meters using a measuring tape. Do you know that we can use GPS to see the distance between places? Yeah, you can try using GPS on your mobile phone. Measuring speed To find out the speed of an object, we can measure the distance traveled by the object and the time taken for the object to move that distance. The unit speed of an object is meter per second with the symbol or kilometers per hour with the symbol. When an object has the speed of 2 meter per second, it means that the object traveled 2 meter in 1 second. The speed of a car is shown in the speedometer. The speed of the car is 120 km per hour. Which means that the car travels 120 km per hour. Wow, that's quite fast. Representing motion of an object. Kitty went for a run in the sidewalk. She ran a distance for 5 meters every 5 seconds. We can represent Kitty's motions using a horizontal scale like this. Then, we can also represent Kitty's motion using a table as shown. Besides, we can represent Kitty's motion by drawing a graph. The graph shows how the distance Kitty covered changes with time. This type of graph is called a distance time graph. In the graph, the time to cover a certain distance is represented on the horizontal axis. This is also known as the x-axis. Meanwhile, the distance traveled by kitties is represented on the vertical axis. This is also known as the y-axis. Alright, how was our exploration today? Was it fun? Great! I hope that by learning science today, you will be able to describe the motion of an object. Moreover, you will be able to measure and represent the motion of an object. Now, it's trivia time. Answer the questions from Quick Check on pages 82 and 86 on your science textbook. Write your answer and post them on the answer column in Google Classroom. I will respond directly and discuss together. Alright, that's all for today. I'll see you in the next session with a discussion about the relationship between forces and motion. Moreover, I will see you in a Zoom meeting to discuss the activity book. Thank you for watching. Stay happy and healthy, stay safe, and stay at home. Remember the three W's. Wash your hand often, wear your mask, watch your distance from others. See you next week, and bye-bye!